recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends Podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week we're uh, we're in full quarantine here at Studio 12A due to the coronavirus. Oh, the coronavirus. So I thought I'd bring out a special bonus episode with uh, one of my favorite guests, Mr. Eel Naslo, or Conspiracy Theory Lee, or Bruce, or whatever you want to call him. Anyway, this episode was recorded a little while back after consuming several vodka sodas, so be warned. We, uh, we probably sound a little boozed up uh, during this episode here, so... But I thought it would be kind of fitting to air this particular show of us discussing some of our most interesting job experiences, since most of us can't actually go into our jobs right now. So sit back, pour yourself a stiff tall one, and enjoy the special bonus edition of Mr. Lee Olson. All right, Lee. Hey, man, it's good to have you back on the show. How you been? Uh, I'm well. Again, uh, you know, I, I really can't believe you keep having me back. Dude, uh, if I could have you back on every episode, I would. If no. you if you'd if you'd agree to it, I you want to come on every episode? Uh, do you want to fly me out? <laughs> I don't know if that's in the budget right now. Let's let's check. Is this in the budget? Uh, or my secretary saying Send it no. Send to your CFO. So you <laughs> can get, it, get it approved. If if I can get down here for free, hey. You look pretty good. Have you have you lost weight? Yes, that last time, and I have the same answer, which is, <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know. Are you on a? Are you on any kind of crazy diets right now? Or no. You're always I'm, on like a. You you're, you and Chuck are always on like these these diets that are. For me, it was always trying to solve a problem, and and I solved a lot of that problem with, because uh, I had neck and back injuries, and I've been trying to figure it out for 20 years. Okay. And okay. so now I'm in the gym about six hours a week. Just a just a quick, real quick disclaimer. Uh, we've had a couple drinks before this particular episode, so. A couple, but. But it's for, not it's further, nothing crazy or anything like that. But, but further <laughs> disclaimer: when Josh says I look like I've lost weight, I still weigh two hundred and forty pounds. So a couple drinks, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, all right. So, Lee, what I want to talk to you about is, uh, you know, we've had some uh, pretty damn cool jobs in the past. Like, if you're thinking of like normal people that have had like you know just like a regular desk job over the years, that is what I'm talking about. Like, you've worked for the Mariners. I've worked in radio. You and Kevin owned a, a nightclub. We've definitely not followed a traditional path. That is true. That is true. I mean, we, we've, we've already covered your days with the Mariners, but you've also worked at places like uh, Incredible Universe. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> do, you have any, uh, do you have any stories about uh, working at Incredible Universe? I mean, Incredible Universe was weird for me because it was during the baseball strike. So oh. it was 90. I mean, the ba- baseball went on strike in 94. There wasn't a... Uh, World Series in 94. Just to clarify, do people even know what Incredible Universe is anymore? No, the people... It was like a very 90s know. like uh, place, right? Yeah, no, it was it was like a Best Buy, but... Like Good by. Guys. Yeah, but, but, wait, that's but not it was even the same anymore. people that did Radio Shack. Oh, really? And it was a big deal. It was like, oh, hey, we're going to make it like this really, you know, big circus. Deal. I just... You know what I associate that with? Uh, when Windows 95 came out, like they had a big, giant, like crazy party. Yep. And like these, they had these, they were known for having, you walk in and they, they had this TV thing that was like, it was like the biggest TV you've ever seen. It was. It was crazy. And well, you worked with there with uh, some, uh, like a future president uh, or yeah, future president be, candidate. I mean, that'd be rad if Evan ended up as president, but <laughs> no, I mean, well, I mean, but really what it was is kind of a stopover point for a lot of us from Auburn because what the hell was there to look oh, yeah, at there's, in Auburn and yeah. then the super mall showed up. Right. And the super mall was a big deal when it showed up. I mean, it was, you know. There was nothing else. It became a big dud overall, but like it was, it was a pretty big deal. Like when it came in, kind of like the, uh, the, the racetrack that was kind of like the same era. Like it came in like the big racetrack, horse track, first kind of new commerce where we went to high school. And for me, the timing again was just important because I, I, baseball's on strike. I didn't have a job. That's true. Yeah. So I had to go work there. And then, uh, so it was basically high school. I mean, it was a bunch of us from high school. Now, what would you say the best job you ever had was? I mean, the Mariners because of the formative i mean it, you just can't be being in that environment when you're 14 15 16 yeah. you can't i mean that's the best job but i i wouldn't say it's the job i learned the most at okay okay yeah because you you definitely uh, i described to us uh 
in the past, uh, what a couple episodes ago, that you, you had some like awesome stories. You like brush shoulders with some of the most famous like baseball players of the day. Randy Johnson became a World Series champion in Phoenix. Yeah, which is upsetting to Seattle fans. Uh, that wasn't upsetting to me. It was. I mean, it sucks that the Mariners haven't won a World Series, but I was happy for Randy. And and honestly, yeah, he yeah, got I mean, screwed by the Mariners. The Mariners screwed him. That was pretty so. bad. And remember, he's like kind of like kind of stopped. The Mariners kind of fucked him over, and then he they was... Did. Well, they did, and, yeah. and that was the only thing... For all the shitty things the Mariners did, that was the only one I can remember that there was an actual reaction. We had a brick thrown through the, the window at the Ooh. Mariners' office. So. Dude, I remember... I was so excited. If you knew Randy Johnson was pitching, you pretty much knew the Mariners were going to win. Yeah. I mean... No, he was, he was a showstopper. I mean, he, he was, was like, what, like 85%? Like... <laughs> He was he was Seriously. that good, and, and it was you know the, the Mariners. And I think I've heard right. Griffey say that too before yeah. as well. You could kind of like let up a little bit if you knew Randy Johnson was going right. to be pitching that night, right? And and you know there is, I mean we're kind of doubling back on the Mariners, but the, that era <laughs> it's interesting. Well, it is especially and that era. That era is so important for uh, for Mariners fans, but really it's a, it's it's baseball, it's or sports in general. Yeah, the Mariners in that era had. I mean, geez, aside from the steroid stuff, four what should be first ballot Hall of Famers in the lineup. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Edgar, Randy, A-Rod, Griffey. Ichiro. Uh, or is that, Ichiro. is that the same? Ichiro's late. I mean, it's they, a little kind of like overlap. But, of, like, yeah. but like that that era, you know, kind of the mid-90s Mariners was a really, really great team that just never won the World Series. If they had won the World Series, even once, they'd be considered among the best teams. And I think I I said this before, like, uh, such great uh, characters, too. Like, it... Yeah. But, um, you know, I remember for me, I I loved working at uh, the Parks Department. It wasn't like a... It wasn't like working at the radio station where it was like a, you know, very, you know, uh, it wasn't like a cool job to say you worked at, but like... You know, it was fun. It was like you're, you're like you're not you're not dealing with people. You're the the job is amazing. It's so laid back. I loved how laid back it was. <laughs> I think I've said this before to you, but like, you know, you start at eight, eight or seven a.m. and uh, when I say start, I mean like you're on the clock at seven a.m. Right, you meet for coffee at and 7 then and then they're like they sit around. They're like and then like ten minutes later they're like. Okay, well, uh, and then they start telling like each like group of people like what they want you to do, and by the time like you get out to the place, then you're like you know usually in, in Seattle it's like raining, so it's like okay, well then you got to put on rain gear and you got to get all your equipment ready and you get all that stuff ready and then and then it's uh, oh oh it's time for break and then a uh, break right. time comes and then you like you got to get all your rain gear off and then you got to go to the so cafe you, relax you gotta you gotta drive to the cafe and then and the the fifteen minute break which is. 20 minutes 25 minutes and then it's government work yeah and then like you know after that then you go oh shit it's uh almost lunchtime (laughs) you know right after that you like work an hour and then you're like oh fuck it's almost lunchtime so then some break cafe switches to their lunch menu and you just say just bring it on out (laughs) no no so like so you'd leave the cafe then you go you go like (laughs) work you bothered to leave the cafe (laughs) you'd you'd leave the the actual like uh i never had this job it sounds rad (laughs) Dude, it's amazing. So, like, you'd leave, you'd leave the cafe, and then you go work with quotations and mark in the air. I'm glad you said that. So, so you go work uh, for like an hour, but then, but then it would be like, oh shit, we got to get back, we got to drive 20 minutes back to the actual like place where we go to lunch. <laughs> so we have to. I'm not even joking. You like, plan your whole work day around your breaks. <laughs> you, you drive. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard you say that you did any work anywhere. No, this is so great. So. <laughs> Is there a work? In th- this is taxpayer dollars. I'm, this is uh, this is going to be an episode My of boy. John Stossel's next thing. <laughs> what city are we talking about? Who's the manager? This is twenty something years ago. So anyway, <sighs> I'm sure you, it's gotten you, better. You drive. <laughs> you drive back. You have lunch, which is half hour. Again, quotations in the mark. Half half hour. And it's like, what, like 40, 45 minutes. And then it's like, okay, well, now we got to go out and actually, you know. Do, do some, some work. work. <laughs> wow. So check this out. So then like, uh, then you, you go, you go out and you have to drive back to where you work. You have to drive to work. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I love okay. your job already. I, I love this job. Why did you ever quit it? Did you quit? Did you get, what happened? It was a part-time seasonal job, but like. Why didn't you stay there until they kicked I you out? You should have slept there. So wait, wait, check On this the out. clock, which I'm sure you probably could have gotten away with. <laughs> this is. This sounds like a dream job. Why are you talking to me on the radio? You should be <laughs> retired as a parks department king guy. So anyway, uh, so we go like 
work. <laughs> Dude, you remember the guy that came and talked to us in high school? About, like, he was a motivational speaker. And they had the first Matt guy Matt Foley? They, they had the first guy on who had climbed Mount Everest and yeah, nobody gave yeah. a shit. And then the second guy was like, I've worked 25 years for the parks department and I haven't done one minute of work. <laughs> and I'm fucking retired in two more years. Remember how hyped up we got? Dude. Oh. That was all a lie because nobody ever gives that right. secret up. <sighs> anyway, so that was that was probably my favorite job because like okay, so like that was like during the week, but on the weekends, there's nobody there. All the full timers are off on the weekends, so then they have the, the part timers. The, the full time you didn't put air quotes around the full timers. Full time <laughs> what? <laughs> full time full time cafe <laughs> patrons. Ones with the punch, by the way, the second the break card. was at, also at a cafe, but it was a different side of town. Yeah cafe yeah the punch card for free banana bread because you go there four times a week yeah. so so <clears throat> yeah so that's a great job sounds like it right well it makes my job sound shitty i've had interesting jobs that uh the coolest no, but, thing about them is to say you work there okay so wait check this out so on the on the weekends it was just the part-timers so like on the the part-timers so the schedule on the part-timers was you would get there like at six o'clock in the morning You'd open up the gates, and then you'd open up, open up the bathrooms, and then you'd uh, essentially just uh, pretty much drive around checking empty garbage cans and listen to the radio. That sounds, aside from the cafe, that sounds remarkably similar to the full time guys, <laughs> doesn't it? You just drive around, and look for food. Dude, why you got to rip on the cafe? The uh, the the, the I, waitresses look, I, need to make uh, money, like filling up coffee. I love the cafe. I love Sunbreak <laughs> Cafe. They have fantastic breakfast. <laughs> And if you didn't finish like a project, like they would give you assigned projects like, um, you know, uh, do your job. No, like, you know, OK, uh, Mike, you're on a uh, graffiti removal. Uh, Steve, you need to uh, trim some of those hedges. Uh, uh, Jay, you need to uh, mow the lawns, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, yeah, well, if that interrupts with the uh, cafe time, <laughs> there's going to be a problem. Like, if, be a if we can squeeze this shit in, I'll, I'll take care of it. But if not... <laughs> We'll, maybe we'll look into it next dude, week. Dude, I tried so hard to get like full time there, dude. It was like oh, it was you so should amazing. Still be trying to get full time. <laughs> that place sounds awesome. Anyway, but after I graduated college, I I, I began uh, working in radio, doing promotions and in the evening and uh, and on the weekends. And uh, but I also took a job with our, our buddy Kevin, uh, who suggested that I check out, you know, helping out with his buddy who yeah. was. Uh, doing this big job uh, laying pavers. Yeah, construction. Yeah, so I ended up working there, uh, helping out doing uh, construction on the weekends while while still DJing uh, weddings and dances and stuff and, and then doing uh, radio promotions on, on nights and weekends. And it was interesting working with like all these different kinds of people. You would know this like back in the in the day. Like, so you're like working with like, I mean, all all sorts of people, like old guys, young guys, criminals, College grads, yep. high school dropouts. Every culture, every race. Yeah, every, like everybody. Mormons, like back from their missions. Yeah. Mormons headed to their missions. Exactly, exactly. So, um, and when you graduated and you're looking for a summer job. Let's be clear, high school, because I never graduated from college. Okay, well, when you finished college, <laughs> yeah. I suggested to you, dude, you looking for a job? Dude, I could hook you up. Dude, yeah, that's this is gonna look. be this is gonna be awesome. Like this is gonna be great. I'm gonna be like re reunited, and it feels so good. Yeah, uh, you know what? The, it, but it's weird how things come around. I, I joke about how that might have been the worst moment of my life because it wasn't working in a pillow factory. Like, right, right. The shit we ended up doing. So I ended up joining you. I mean, yeah. for what I thought was, so, and at the time I was in still in college, sort of. I was I was commuting to Edmonds, uh, or somewhere up there. To go to the Central Extension Branch now, just and racing back. Remember, I used to have to break into your apartment to take a shower. Yeah, after that was class awesome. and then come to work or whatever. Now, or just to describe to, to people what type of construction this was, why don't you help me describe to the to the people that might be listening to the show? Who knows who? If anybody's listening, but well, what kind of construction was this, and how was the job? How was it working? Well, we started the, con the this episode started with me talking about some of the injuries and stuff that I'm working out now. 20 years later yeah uh, I have five herniated discs and a torn shoulder that's the kind of construction this was this was <laughs> no so, remember, so remember pavers, when pavers and retaining walls are fucking concrete and stone 
Yeah, and, and, and pavers like a lot of people don't even don't even know what pavers are. So right. essentially, they look like the bricks, bricks, bricks. and but, they can't they can yeah. be bricks. I mean, basically, yeah. if you can imagine any brick that's laid horizontally on the ground, that's a paver. Whether right. it's made of concrete or, or stone or porcelain or whatever it is. Uh, and then we did retaining walls, which were giant blocks of concrete, and yeah. the some dumb schmuck has to pick that up and set it down in the right place. Look, not everything was bad about working construction. You get to listen to the radio. You get to talk exactly how you wanted. Uh, tell jokes. Fuck around. Like no, it's it's a really liberating job. Construction in general, I think, or at it's least like not, Office least Space, our, the movie Office right. Space. Like when he like he just hates his job so much. Like he's trying so hard to just fucking. He doesn't give a shit anymore. You know, there, I mean, like I think construction. Maybe not all construction, but at least the crews we had and where mm. we were. It's really it was really liberating because you'd show up. Everyone knew what they were in for, and it was a physical punishment. Like you just, oh, knew, yeah, you knew. yeah. There was no masking it. There was no escaping oh, I it. Mean, there was no way to look around the idea that this was going to hurt. So when you're in that position, it really sort of sets you free for the rest of your of your day. And especially mentally. when I when I first started, like it was extra brutal because we were we would we didn't have any the machinery, so we right. were literally just everything by hand all right. day for like ten hours a day, just picking up stacks of bricks yeah. and moving them like constantly all day for 10 hours straight it was yeah, it was mind-boggling how the, the, brutal it was yeah to describe this i mean i remember when when jewel came out and watched the work we did for the first time she was horrified oh just, just horrified. same with my remember my mom when we yeah. did her little patios and yeah. stuff like my, for people, my people parents? can't picture it and then they see what we do and they go and she's like oh my god oh my god you, you do that every day yeah like literally every day for like how how many hours right. well um oh right. my god no, are you okay it's it, it yeah it, it's, it was crazy so it's like when when we would say like yeah i do construction it's like oh no 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 yeah and we we're in the weather in seattle so yeah, like do, you're, you're like hold on do you remember that job we did where we went out to that guy's house. We were working at some millionaire's house in, in North Bend. And it was, I don't know how this is possible. It was 29 degrees and raining. Do you remember that? Day? Oh, yeah. Oh, and we were out there and we were yeah. cutting We were cutting on the wet saw and our hands were freezing and we were afraid we were going to cut our, our hands off yeah. or fingers because you couldn't feel them. Right. And we were cutting and we made it like, I don't know, almost to lunch or and the other one would go to the truck and warm their hands until they could feel them. And then when the you could <laughs> start feeling your hands, that is when you were ready to cut. Right. And then you'd go out. And it, so yeah. you and I switched that day <sighs> and we made it to halftime or to, to like lunchtime or whatever. And, and we called uh, the owner of the company, Brian, and said, Brian, dude, we, we just, we can't do this. <laughs> We can, we're done and he goes remember how many times how many times you, when we when we worked we would look at each other like what the fuck the are we do fuck what are we are doing, we doing? Like, do you remember what he said no when we called him no he said are oh, you guys meant to work today what why, why would you work in this shit yeah because it was yeah. like free like yeah it was 29 degrees and raining i don't like, know how it's possible that's meteorologically impossible it was fucking raining the shit would fall on you and freeze and we called, we called the owner of the company and he was baffled that we showed up for work <sighs> Yeah. You're like, wait, you guys are you guys are working you guys right are now? Working? What? Don't work. This is what you can't do anything in what this. The, what the hell? But you remember the first job that we actually uh, started uh, working together on? Yeah, I do. Alistair's. Kevin's brother's yeah, house. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I do. Cause, okay. Because I was racing. I would go. I would work. We'd work from what six thirty or seven in the morning to three you got in to, the that's afternoon. A, that's the time you got to meet Vic. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Was, that was my introduction to the whole thing. And he got to like he didn't he back up over his. Uh, he, he backed off the driveway. At, was there ever a job that he didn't like destroy no. shit and like? No, cost do you remember what the, our first what our kind of our duty was? You and I. Yeah, we would kind of be like the we call the fixer the, uppers, the Vic like fix the, crew. <laughs> He would go and do jobs, and we would follow behind. Well, because Vic crew was a master at finishing jobs fast. He was very fast. So and really, really hard worker. Yeah, no, he you can't take that away from him. Bafflingly he, hard. Yeah, yeah. He would sleep at the job site in a sleeping bag on concrete. It yeah, no, stunning. he he was like the most hardcore person I've ever met. Like so much so that like, how would you describe Vic? Like, so Vic was like this. Um, He's the most interesting man in the world. He really is. Like, uh, so his parents were like rich. Yeah. Right. And he, uh, he, like this blonde haired guy. Um, looks like Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Actually, you're you're right. Yeah. He looks like Kurt Cobain. But uh, on the weekends, greatest guy in the world. Yeah. So oh, super awesome, nice, super fun. thoughtful, very yeah, like very like personable and everything. Yeah. But boom, you hit uh, Monday at six a.m. The biggest asshole I've ever met. <laughs> He was he, he was, was legendary asshole. We're talking like um, 
I mean, we have stories screaming about, in your face. Oh, dude, like, what's your favorite Vic story? And when I say favorite, I'm using again quotations in the in the air here. Oh God! I, so, I, like, uh, how about the time that he nearly killed? He almost killed me. Yeah. And then the same day, probably like 20 minutes later, uh, you threw out your back. Yeah. And no, and that was. That was kind of an average day. It happened to be the the, <laughs> the day that I was finally. Oh, look! That's an average day. It kind of was. He was that guy. He was. Yeah. The guy no, it's just, it's true. It really is true. You had you had to watch your ass because he would he would run you like I'm really shocked. So he's in the really Bobcat, hurt. like which is a what like a mini, a mini bulldozer. X, yeah, it's fucking, like a mini loader. Right. And he's so fucking reckless in this thing, and I'm, I'm like right next to him because you had to be right next to him because I was right. spreading like he would dump like uh, gravel. Right. And I would like have the shovel and I would right. like spread it, it across. Out. So, so, uh, he, this one time he, uh, he lifted it up. I, I can't remember what I said. I, I don't know if he said something. I couldn't hear him and I go, what? And he's like, Argh! and he like got mad. He's like, who are you fucking asshole? And like, and he fucking and this like, this is not hyperbole. Josh is not making a, a mockery. Oh yeah. He's he like, was you literally fucking like, asshole. You like fucking asshole. You listen to me when I fucking talk to you. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God. I, I'm like, Jesus, calm down. Like, and like he took the bobcat and he like, he swung it like really fast and it, Almost and, to try to hit you. No, he yeah. had he had that thing where it was like I think he would do things before he knew he was doing them. Yeah, and and, and I, I I seriously I dove out of the way and like right. landed in dirt right. like because if I didn't my head would be probably off. Yeah, no, and and, uh, and that was the same day that my back. I mean, I had had issues with my back before. But oh, dude, I've never that seen was the you day that I, I was finally that shut. I was finally shut down, and he had gone somewhere, or done something, and he came back, and I was sitting because remember somebody I've else. I've never just, seen you that like you were. God, this job is so shitty. I'm uh, taking gravel like uh, back, and and yeah. what you do? They had this like thing where you like this uh, this Little lever, yeah, yeah, and they they would they would shoot gravel like uh, into the wheelbarrow, and it, you just like load gravel, keep going back and forth, back and forth. I don't know. Let's get deeper into this dream. No, I'm job. just saying. I'm just saying. Like uh, this so, dream job so of I I pass rocks, I pass you rocks. I pass you, and you're propped up. Your your yeah. back is no, propped was, up. Yeah, because somebody and you're else like, had driven me, and I and I couldn't move. I, and I like go, I was, dude, are you, uh, dude, are you okay? And you're like, dude, I I little, I can't move at all. And I go, shit. And then I was like, uh, did you tell Vic? And he goes, he goes, uh, not yet. He's like still over there. And I, and uh, and then I go, all right, well, I come back, and you're like, <laughs> you go, dude. I, I, I think I said something to the you effect said, of, if yeah. I could move, I'd have kicked that fucker in you the face. You, no, you said you would have killed him. Yeah. You, like I would, I would, I would have fucking, I would have literally killed him. And yeah. I go, what the fuck? And he goes. You know, what he, you know what he said to me? And I say it. Yeah, he goes, he comes up and he says, what the fuck's wrong with you? I said, hey, man, I don't want to stop the show here, but I'm hurt. Like, I'm hurt. I hurt my back. I'm not asking for... And, like, his thoughts are, like, he's thinking about himself and, like, uh, he's like, oh, you're not a man? Or, you like... Right. Cause like what it, whatever goes through his mind is, it, it, I don't, I, I can't, I, I don't know. I don't know what goes through his mind, but... He's so it's just like you're automatically you're just being a pussy. You're just yeah. you're just giving up. Yeah, he's, like, he's the foreman on the site, and <laughs> right. it's yeah. He says, uh, and he finally says, um, you know, uh, say, "Hey, I'm really hurt." And he goes, "Well, what do you want me to do?" And I said, "You know, I don't know. I don't I don't want to stop the show here for you guys, but I didn't drive here. I got to get out of here." And he goes, "I'm going to call you a fucking ambulance." <sighs> Or no, I take it back. I take it back. He said yeah. that, and then he he said, "You can go lay down in the truck and cry there if you want." Ooh, I forgot about that part. Right. Oh, it's right. so bad. And so, and so, I remember it became a big deal, and he called the owner of the company, Brian, Jesus. and Brian was out of town, and Brian said, "What is wrong with you? Put him in a goddamn <sighs> truck and get him out of there." Oh God, so bad. And so I drove out, and I mean, like, I'm still employed <laughs> with the company, but Vin right. is not. So oh, God. <laughs> I yeah. So it. anyway, uh, yikes. Um, so I remember. Uh, so moving on uh, to a just a different job, but it was uh, me, you, and Brian, and it was a residential job that we did uh, working uh, overlooking the Seattle skyline, the Space Needle, and all that. It was like really cool looking. Oh, I do remember that. So, yeah. do you remember what the the famous story from that job was? I do not. So our boss Brian, who's like literally like the world's nicest guy, he really like is. He's, he really he's is. great. He's, he's a he's nice good guy. As they come. And he comes up and he goes, guys. I have an awesome surprise for you. And I'm like, whoa, shit. Like, what is it? Like, this is awesome. Half a day off. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, that, that's, right. of course that wouldn't be it. He comes up and he, cause it was all sunny. It was like the right. was summer at that point. And he goes, uh, I got you guys some shirts. Oh, that's right. And oh, I shit. go, I go, oh, fucking awesome. <laughs> and I go, 
dude, what what are the shirts? And he goes, well, here you go. And he like he kind of like balls up the he shirts had, and throws, print, and, and for throws the record, them to us. Everybody should know this is a small business. Yeah, small yeah, business, totally, small yeah. construction company, kind of a niche thing. And Brian was very proud of his shirts. Yeah, yeah. His so, shirts made. So we get these shirts. We immediately put them on, and like. <laughs> <laughs> And for, look, hold on. So At great. this point, we're all in our twenties, yeah. and we're all in so, pretty damn good shape. So, <laughs> and these still manage to be the least flattering shirts in so the world. So I don't know, like, you know when they started making like the girl shirts that were like the complete like form fitting like girl right. shirts. These shirts were like they were tan, and they had red lettering on them, but they were like extra short in length, and they fit us just like. Like a girl would wear like those Britney Spears shirts like back in the day. Yeah. Like yeah. it was like a half shirt that accentuated your boobs. So I look at Lee and Lee's wearing his and I'm looking I'm I'm wearing mine and I go, Um, do I look as bad in this shirt as you do? <laughs> and like Lee goes, Holy shit. He goes, I don't think I've ever worn a shirt this bad, like ever in my entire life. And I go, I go, What is going on with these shirts? And he goes, he's like, I don't know, dude. And he goes, and then Lee pronounced that this was uh this is it's official it's, it's man boob monday man boob monday yeah so we wore those shirts every monday from there and we kept calling them that <laughs> we had to brian got so mad he's like they're not man boob shirts <laughs> oh they're man you boob need, shirts you need to wear them every day they're fucking the man boob shirts because they 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 made us look like we had great boobs yeah, and we would refuse to wear them any other day but monday and he's like it's not like we had big tits or anything we, no, we, we were, like you said we were in shit like we, we were, were lifting weights we were like <laughs> lifting with thousands of pounds per day like we were yeah oh and, so great uh, oh, i just i love that story awesome. so um when you guys uh later you actually had a nightclub Kevin's brother right. So it's sort of the, for, uh, for me, my, my guys ran the nightclub. Little, a little different than Kevin's. Ke- I, Kevin had worked with Brian and then he went on and did this other stuff in his, yeah, yeah. and Kevin's cousin ran uh, a nightclub in Tacoma called jazz bones. Sure. And so he went there and Kevin helped him manage it. And it actually folds into when that day with Vic, because I hurt my back and I called Brian and said, I, I quit. I'm not, I'm not ever working with that guy again. <laughs> I don't and, know why. And, and I was really hurt. I was yeah. really physically hurt. Uh, <clears throat> and Kevin called me, you know, he says, Hey man, I know you're, you're not working. Do you want to come down and, and work at jazz bones? I said, well, what f- doing what? And he said, well, our, our Wednesday night bouncer doesn't want to bounce because it's too rough. It's, it was salsa night. And I said, dude, I'm really hurt. And he goes, I hey, you just sit there. So I, I went down <laughs> there and I started bouncing. I started working the door at jazz bones. Hey, jazz bones. Okay. And, and it just it, it moved. That was a cool bar. Though. It was a cool bar. It was very yeah. cool. And Jason's a, a good businessman. Um, and Kevin and I had the opportunity to sort of work our way up really fast. So we did. And then Jason actually opened a new club across the street called Fenders. And Kevin and I were going to manage it. That was the plan originally. Jason uh, essentially found that he couldn't handle both clubs. And so he offered to sell us his portion. Okay. So Kevin and I bought 50% of the club. So he and I were 50%. And then he, Jason sold the other 50% to Kevin's brother, Alistair. Gotcha. And Alistair owned the building. Okay. So that's how we ended up doing it is I didn't plan on owning a nightclub. Right, It right. wasn't my dream. It was, I was hurt, ended up bouncing, and then a year, a little more than a year later. How long did that place last? Like, it seems like it was like open for years, but it was like... It was about literally a, like a year or it something, about, right? It was about a year and a half. We opened, right? okay, we opened okay. New Year's Eve 2004 and closed kind of mid-2005. Wow. Or New Year's Eve 2004. It seems like it was so much longer. Four, and wow. then, right. That's and wild. So, yeah, it, and it, it wore me out. I mean, that's... And it's because yeah. of jobs that, like, aren't cool, but they end up teaching you more than anything. That job taught me more than any other job I've ever had. And it taught me all I, the things not to do and how business is business that's well, it. well you guys Captain had some like uh the bar looked cool and everything it was great remember, remember like the the bikers came in yeah. and they're like we're gonna make this our bar we're gonna make this our bar you guys had kind of like a motorcycle theme it like motorcycle. it was like motorcycles yeah, we, we were and all stuff. motorcycle guys i mean we had you know yeah. alistair raced and kevin and i both rode sure and we had the bikes all around the club yeah 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 and these no, bikers came in they're like I mean, well that's, shit this so is a perfect fit this is for a, all the, we're gonna make this our club the, right for all the weird stuff i've done in my life uh that's the scariest moment of my life scariest night yeah uh yeah they there was a local uh biker club uh the gypsy jokers um, and one of their and they would come in you know we had two wheel tuesdays and thunder thursdays and they would come in and and like 
to give people an idea. Like I used to rev my bike up and do donuts in the club and, and shit. Like it was that kind of place where we just had fun. We, we kind of cut it loose and these guys came in <laughs> and, uh, they liked it and they pulled me aside one night on, it must've been a thunder Thursday. And they said, Hey, you know, as a group, by the way, guys, what's that? What the hell is a thunder Thursday? It's an excuse for bikers to come in. It's just, there's <laughs> okay. two wheel Tuesdays, thunder Thursdays, okay. which basically turned into, or it was two wheels was two wheel Tuesdays was like sport bikes and stuff. Uh, thunder Thursdays was like big Harleys and, you know, kind of biker clubs. So these okay. guys came in and I won't mention their names, but, uh, <laughs> they were good. They Thank were, you. Yeah. Well, that's for my own <laughs> safety as well. I don't know if they're out there. But they asked me, you know, he said, the guy, the head guy, yeah. the chapter president, and he had a couple other guys with him, uh, said, hey, we really like your club. I said, hey, thanks, man. You know, he said, uh, we kind of want to make it our clubhouse. And their clubhouse had been in South Tacoma and had gotten shut down uh, previous. And I said, oh, that's always good. Yeah. And so I was kind of talking to him, but it was in the bar. It was loud and whatever. And, and I was the only bouncer that night. And I came out and he knew I was the owner. And I said, well, let's go talk outside. I can't hear you very well in here. And I went outside with him and it was him again. I'll leave names out, but, uh, a, a very tall guy. Um, and, uh, a couple other guys from, and these were a couple different clubs that were sort of aligned. And he said, Hey, we really like your club. We'd like to make it our clubhouse. I said, well, you know, I appreciate it, but, uh, you know, I want to make sure. And I was being diplomatic. You know, yeah. I was saying, hey, you know, I, I'd like to keep this open and sort of attractive to uh, basically we're trying to draw in, you know, the 22-year-old college girls because they bring the guys. Sure. We have the college down the way. Always, that's what we want. Girls always bring in guys. Guys are going to go to bars no matter what. Right. If the girls so, are there. Guys are going to go anyway. Yeah. But So, uh, you know, I was trying to be very diplomatic and he kept he kept on. You know, he said, hey, well, I get it. Uh, but I, we would like to make this our club. We will bring you tons of business. We're going to have a couple hundred scooters down here. He said, I can make a phone call right now, and we can have a couple hundred scooters down here. He called them scooters. Yeah. And I said, well, I appreciate what you're doing. You guys are always welcome to come in here and have a beer. Um, but this will never, ever be your club. It's never, ever going to be it. It's mine. It's Kevin's. It will never be your club. And I remember thinking at that moment, I'm it. It's me on the sidewalk with these guys. With yeah. Me. And I right. found out later, one of the guys that was out there was a cop killer who had done prison time and then got out on some weird technicality. Oh, well, that's comforting. So I really, and, and that was one of the weird clarity moments where, as I was saying it, I thought, this could go really wrong. And I just remember thinking, I have no other choice though. I can't, I can't tell them they can come in and take this. And I thought, well, here it comes. Jesus. Like it just, and I remember it was super calm though. I was like. It's never going to be your club. And I just huh. stood out there and expected to get Did my they ever come back or anything like that? Well, or? so he stood there and, you know, the, the one thing I've learned about bikers and, and not all, I'm sure I'm generalizing, but is they understand one thing and it's respect. I respected them and I was willing, I was genuinely willing to stand there against five guys and defend what I, what I thought was important. And he said, last chance. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> And I looked at him and said, it's never going to happen. And kind of that awkward silence. And I thought, here it comes. And Lee just signed his death certificate. Right. And he said, okay. And they threw their legs over their bikes and they left and they never came back. Wow. Okay. So that's the, I, I've been in a, a few fights here and there. I mean, you know, you're a bouncer to do whatever. That was the scariest moment I've ever encountered. No. Yeah. Was, no shit. No, yeah. I can no uh, curse words, no punches, no nothing. Right. Jesus. Okay, well, yeah, I, I mean, you had some uh, on the lighter side of things here. Yeah. You had uh, you had some great bands. You, you were able to book all your your own music and I shit. Was able like, to, yeah, Kevin, like did, a, Kevin did a better job of booking than I did. Yeah, I, like I was better at bouncing and doing the security and kind of doing that sort of daily stuff. He was really Kevin good is at, good at like that kind of thing. Uh, he is good at that. You, you had like Roger Klein and Seven yeah. Dust and like a Sir Mix a Lot. You yeah, had Sir Mix a Lot. That's cool. Who yep. else did you have there? Do you have any other? Uh, 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 I can't remember. Goodness, we brought. Goodness oh, that was back awesome! Yeah, they, goodness. they recorded their CD there. That's awesome. I've got that hanging on my wall. That's one of the, you know, that was one of the few things that there, that went completely right. You know, we yeah. we had had talked about getting goodness, but they had broken up at that time, 
and it was we were both big fans and we thought we can probably get him back goodness is like one of those bands that we always talk about how uh they should have been a lot bigger than right, they were right they just they it's just missed, they just missed it by a minute right right kind of like uh who's that other group that we would talk about uh, second, second coming. coming that yeah. we had them play there too oh really that's cool yeah yeah jesus man crazy uh, so after this, uh, you and I, we wanted to mix things up. We wanted to stand out. So we came up with this idea. How can we stand out? And, uh, we went to my, uh, my mom. She thought this was a fantastic way to separate yourself from the pack. Cause this was like, oh, you know, God, I, uh, <laughs> I was sitting here searching. And this is the, brain. this oh, is man. the, the video resume that we came oh, up man. with. And uh, you care to explain the uh, the vi- video I resume? Just, I, honestly, I thought it was hilarious. I like apparently it was awesome. Like apparently we were ahead of our time because nobody was doing right. Video no, resumes. Like, no, remember because like remember we we went online after we made this and we're like, wait a minute, um, there's nobody else that like had a video yeah, resume at the time, it. and we just did it basically as kind of a joke. But we also thought it might like we we, were, we just thought it was a good idea because okay, so essentially you our idea was like okay, you send out your resume, right? And then after you send out your resume, what separates you from the pack, from the 10,000 resumes that everybody else is getting? So, like, we decided to do, like, you know, everything that you could think of that, you know, I, like, I, what's, I, what's I the idea? You, like, I think you and I tuned into the idea that, yeah, you have to have skills and, yeah, you have to meet the requirements and all that shit that ends up on a, yeah. on a resume. But what you really have to do is get along with the people you work with so that you can right. work as a team. Everyone, and that's something that is missing. Yes. From it's, it's, even today. Even, even today. today. So like, so Maybe everyone, more today. Listen, oh, yeah. Big time more today. Right. Because there's so many like different search engines that literally just uh, separate everybody to and a certain and, team. Yeah, right, yeah. Like and you apply to Boeing, you don't get to at, talk to a person look, the bottom the line, computer the, lets you. The bottom line is you could pretty much do most of the jobs that are out there. Like, uh, you just have, everyone has to learn right. when you get into a job, you have to learn how to do the job. That's, right. that's the first thing. Now you see, what's the, what's the stat? You see these people more, more than, than you see their your own family. family. Right. So do you want to work with this fucking douchebag over here? Or do you want to work with uh, Lee who put up this video resume? Who's very personable, funny, and, uh, f- right. ha- fun to be around. Right. So, and, and I think that's something that I get why they can't do that because they need to be like you, you have to be basically blind when you hire people, but, yeah, the reality, but, what, but the why reality, do people have interviews then? Why well, don't you right. just hire from, uh, from the, uh, algorithms that are uh, right. online? Well, and that's the danger in all of this because you know, running the nightclub, we had to deal with some of that stuff too. Like you have to be very careful running a business, not to fall afoul of say favoritism. You don't hire somebody and you hire somebody else. You could get sued by the other person. I, you know, right. I, I worked, I worked, well, I mean, I've done a few jobs, but like I've definitely let people go that ended up suing the company and you have to be very careful. Even though the reality of the situation is you want to find people that you can work with. That's the most important in the real world, but all of this other stuff comes in, all this, this litigious stuff. That was a crazy time too, because like we really couldn't do anything. Like it was, it was nuts. Like remember going to the Boeing convention? (laughs) That was like hilarious. I remember standing outside it. We didn't go. Oh dude, it, that was I gave up and I wanted that to was start nuts. selling Gatorades to everybody in the dude. In the line. That was amazing. I, I mean, we we get there, and we thought we got there early. There's just like this. Uh, we, we're, they're having like a yeah, kind of like an open and con- house. And the or context something. is, of course, this is a you know 2009 or whatever, just after the economy tanked. Yeah, something like that, right? 2009, yeah. 10, when there was just nothing. I mean, <laughs> it, was it was crazy. Like so, we we're like, hey, I heard there's a the, a job thing for like Boeing. So uh, it was a job fair with a bunch, including <laughs> Boeing. It was nuts. Yeah. So we we go there and we, we thought that we got there early and we were there what an two, hour and a half, two, two hours, hours early. early. Right. And the line, how do you describe this line? There had to be a thousand people ahead of us. Fucking like a thousand, at and, and least we, and a we mile were, down the road. This was, like, this was up and a, down. Like we're talking like yeah. a residential neighborhood. So this, and is, shit. this is probably four people wide. For <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. eight blocks. I mean, it was it was around and, like a and how fast center. how fast was the line going? It wasn't. It, it was didn't going. Move. And Lee, at a certain, I, I would say about half hour in, Lee goes. Lee starts undoing his tie, and, and he like, goes, "We're not fucking." Well, ever, and everyone's like really serious. Everyone has their like well, yeah, resumes all, it's and like, existential. Every, like everybody needs a fucking job. Yeah. So like so, and, but Lee doesn't give a shit. He's like, "Well, everyone, <clears throat> well, we're not getting in." It, uh, isn't, it so, isn't that he didn't give it. I, I didn't give a shit, but also, it but was you're that being I just, a realist. I, I just, like it was, I recognized this shit isn't working. It's not going to work. I started like. 
this is one of these times where I just started laughing really hard. Cause like, you know, we're all like looking for a job at this point. Right. And you're like, well, this isn't going to work. Yeah. This is a, you guys, you guys see where the, the entrance is, right? We're not getting in. Cause we can't see the entrance from right. Here. So, so if you guys want to stand here, <laughs> fine. And everyone's like, no one says anything. Everyone's just kind of like, well, because everyone's very... desperate. It's like, it, it, it is weird when people get in, in like a weird fearful state because they're willing to like follow the guy in front just, oh my God. We need but to... that's like one of those things where you just, uh, I find, just find humor in everything. Like, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Like some people are just really not They're It doesn't matter. Like right. if someone did that in back of me and I, they started like, you're always kind of like the straight man. I could never hold it together. I am always like the, just like, I can't hold it in. I just have to start laughing. And if I saw that in behind me, I just like, I just lose it. Right. But I don't know. Well, I don't know. I think I think part of that, like that experience, is is one that's, that's extra sort of, weird too, because like it's like you know people might be in very different situations. Well, yeah, and, and part of that comes from and and all the weird stuff I've done, you know, all the weird jobs and all that stuff. You can only do that if you know you're fine. And through all the stuff I've done, whether I've had two nickels to rub together or not, I'll be fine. And I know that, yeah. and so it frees me up. To say, and just crash on sister's not, couch or you what, know. whatever it is. There's I mean, places like, for you to go. Well, there's places for me to go, but also, I'll be fine if it if it. I can't imagine a situation where I won't be fine. Yeah. If I lose everything and everyone, I can go out and live in the woods. I know how to hunt. Yeah. Like I, it's and it's a weird. It's it's a confidence, but it isn't. It isn't. It's not the first time you've been uh, called the Unabomber. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I like. But what it is is simple. There's a, there's a baseline confidence. Whatever happens, at least everything that I can imagine, I'll be fine. Yeah. It'll suck. And so I'm free to do that stuff. It means I don't really care. It, it doesn't mean I don't care. It means that in those situations, I'm free to say, we're not fucking getting in. <laughs> Look, now it was, uh, it was around this time that you tried out some different types of jobs. One of those jobs that I remember you uh, you trying out was, uh, I believe it was pet licensing. Yeah, that was the worst job I've ever had. I remember you called me in a fucking panic. I've never heard you actually call. Actually, there's only two times that you've actually called me like this. But like, you, I think you called me, and then you called your sister. <laughs> I called. I, well, I called Jewel. You called a lot of people, and you were like, just it was. You got to tell some of these stories. Well, so, like, right. you got to so, describe this job okay, first so off. I, so, I got on with the, with the county. Right. <laughs> I can't believe that this is job. a job, by the way. Like, it was a job, but it was it was a it was a part time or full time but temporary job because okay. when the economy tanked, of course, all the municipalities ran out of money and they're scrambling to get money. One of the dumb ideas that King County and Seattle came up with was we're going to go start hammering all the people who haven't paid their pet licenses. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So they hired a bunch of people. Oh, God. And they took, we had these big databases of people, and we would go to their neighborhoods, and we would knock on every door. Oh, my God. And we would offer to sell them pet licenses, but it wasn't an offer. <laughs> Jesus because Christ. If, because, and they taught us, if you see evidence of a pet, oh if, you see my a, God. if you see a dish, if you see whatever, oh we, my. and we had a list of who's paid up and who isn't. Wow. And so basically, we'd go and ambush these people and oh say, oh, my God. I see you have a pet. Do, do you have so a license? Awkward. Tell you what, we can make this easy for you. We can sell you a pet license right now. And they'd say, I don't want one. And we'd say, well, you don't understand. If you don't buy one from us, the compliance officer comes down and wow. makes you. So it was, it was I like governmental the one that, extortion. I, the, the best story is like when you went to the uh, the guy in uh, Edom Claw. That was, that was like the last. So I was with a trainer the whole time. And they kept telling me, you're going to be the best at this ever. Because apparently I can string a sentence together. But right. I, we went into this guy's house and he had his garage door open and we just kind of walked, you know, of course we asked if we could enter and said, yeah, okay. And he's got this old, old lab there. Yeah. And we say, Hey, give him the whole spiel, you know, whatever. And, and I'm with the trainer, you know, who's teaching me how to do this. And she gives the whole thing and, and he's looking at us just searing. <laughs> and she says, so he, he finally says, he goes, so I have a choice. I can either buy it from you or I'm going to get get a ticket for a dog that I've had for 17 years and have never paid anything for. Oh man. And she goes, well, I mean, we do have to tell compliance and he goes, okay, so go get, go get your license. So she walked back to the truck. Oh God. And he looks at me and I just look at him and I said, I'm really sorry, man. <laughs> I'm really sorry. This is, this is not right. What do you say? 
He goes, yeah, this is fucked up. He goes, I'm going to call all my neighbors. I'm oh, going to tell them you're coming. Fuck. And I'm going to tell them, put away their dog dishes, and put away their dogs. And I said, you should. This is this is really <laughs> bad. This is not good. This is like one of those times that you had like one of these moments that where you, you just knew uh, you, there's no way you can fucking do this. There's like, no, well, uh, except I was still in the point where like. It's such bullshit too. But, like, but there is sort of that thing where I talk about my confidence where I'll be fine. But there are moments where you have to, you have to gauge the cost of something. Yeah. You know, Jewel and I hadn't been together very long. Uh, she was experienced in the same economy we were. And uh, I needed to have a job. Needed to have a job. Needed to yeah, have income. I mean, you got to pay bills. And but... I had this job. And it was paying. And I hated it. Uh, and I remember calling her my first day of being full-time by myself. Jesus. And I called her. I mean, I called, like you said, I called a bunch of people. Yeah, like, yeah. And, I remember and, you and like, I said, your I was like, this like is, I this don't is, know what to do. This is terrible. This is against everything that is in me to have I've never me heard you be like, a government. A, a, that in your voice, too. Your voice was fucking like bad. You're it like, was. Uh, I, dude, um, uh, wow. I, um, to just ambush people like that. And oh, you're it, like, this ain't right, dude. This shit ain't right. Yeah. And so I called you. I remember it was Halloween. And I remember I pulled up to my designated area and I parked and I was a few minutes early and I called Jewel. She called me. I take it back. She called me and she just heard it in my voice. She just heard it. Like you said, she, she heard something. She's like, yeah. Hey, what is wrong? And I said, this, this is wrong. <laughs> like everything about this is wrong. You can't just show up at people's houses I know. and soak money from oh, them so in bad. this economy right, right. Oh, as a government so agent bad. for shit like having a dog. Like you can't do that. You can't do it. And, and, but I didn't say that. I just said, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure about this. You know, like in, inside I was screaming and yeah. she, and she just said, this is why I know I have the right girl for a bunch of reasons, but this reason for the most, we needed the money we needed. I needed the job. And if I quit voluntarily, I wouldn't get unemployment. Yeah. Oh God. All of this added up. She said, you can't do this. You can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Right. You need it's to, so bad. you need to quit. Oh, uh, it's just, a certain point when you you have to like you have to weigh certain aspects of a of a job and like the the it's you know like it, at a certain point it's like not good for your health you you can't you can't well we all the, we all just you know have what I mean? a, like we all have a threshold for whatever it is whether it's it's a moral threshold or a physical threshold or whatever it is and that one for me was just it was a it was an it was a moral it, it was an ethical right. threshold I couldn't yeah put myself in a position yeah if you like i've done sales now if you if you do sales and you do not 100 percent back what you're doing that means you're like a you're like a hard sales like you don't give a shit like you just right. you just want to make money right. like now if you're if you're fully backing like what you're selling and right. you believe in it that makes it so much easier like it's it makes the job easier you could do it like so much better in my well, opinion for me for someone like well, me even if you don't believe in it but you, but you believe in the mission you know hey i gotta make money for my family i gotta do whatever yeah, but, there, but there's I a guess, threshold. But, like, yeah. are you willing to sell something you don't necessarily believe in, but it doesn't hurt you or hurt other people? You know, like you, you don't have some moral objection to it. There's a threshold because if I was selling, if I was actually selling pet licenses where people had a choice, yeah, maybe I don't have that reaction. The problem was I would walk in and tell people, "Would you like to buy a pet license?" Now, and if the answer is no, yeah. my answer was, "Okay, we're you have to compliance officers coming." Now, moving from there, you started uh, working at the. Uh, the Space Needle, yeah, which is like everyone dreams about working at the Space Needle. Right? That was a weird. That was a weird one because so I I applied for just a, a regular security officer yeah. job, and uh, I got the job and it, it paid shit. It was shit. It was a shitty job, <laughs> and it's like one of those jobs that like sounds like dude, what the fuck? You work at like one of the that's the thing people don't know best when, places on the planet. Like the, it was shitty. It was a shitty <laughs> shitty job. And within a couple of weeks, I got put in a position where I was stuck on the observation deck with a mentally ill guy that lost his shit completely. Oh, and and awesome. I kept, I, I mean, I handled it very well. And to the point that I, uh, I basically told him, I can't come back. You guys need to upgrade your systems. And I, that's a much longer story, but <laughs> right, this right. is something that I was completely prepared for and they were not. Yeah. And I let him know and I said, I'm done. I can't work here anymore. And then they called me back. A few months later and said, hey, we fired the guys who ran this department. Would you like to come and help run it? And so I was, there were two of us that managed the security department. And it was right when the Space Needle was going through its 50th anniversary and they were building the Chuhuli Garden and Glass Museum. Huh. So, so it was a very, it, it was, 
honestly, everyone there was unprepared for it. I was unprepared for it. And honestly, I like I've managed people in the past. I've managed departments and whatnot. That was, I was terrible. Do you have any stories about like working uh, there as far as? Uh... It was a blur. I mean, there was a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, the, I'll tell you my, this, my biggest regret. The, you want to know what my biggest regret is? We had a private party at Chihuly Garden and Glass. It was either just before or just after they opened. And, you know, we all have these fancy radios and, and we've got the hidden whatever and we've got a command center and everybody could be on the air. And so whatever you click in and, and announce, everyone hears. And we're at this private party and <laughs> next to me walks in Tom Skerritt. Oh, really? Tom Skerritt, Viper from Top Gun. Nice. And he was also in the, was it Northern Exposure? Or wait, what was the show oh, that he was in? I don't know. He's fucking Viper from yeah, Top Gun. Ton, he's in a ton, ton of, of movies. He's in a ton yeah. of shit. But in Top Gun, one of his most famous things is, you know, they're they're practicing in the <laughs> desert. And he comes on and Goose and, and Maverick are in their thing and they're practicing in the desert. And, and the guy, Tom Skerritt's character, Viper, comes on and he goes, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 110 degrees in the desert and it's whatever. And he starts, yeah. and, and Goose goes, holy shit, it's Viper. <laughs> And Tom Skerritt walked right next to me. I had my finger on my radio, oh, and I had it cocked. Come on, I had man. it cocked. I had it come cocked. On. I was like, I, all I had to do is click and go, <laughs> holy shit, it's Viper. <laughs> and I didn't pull the trigger because I was like, hey, I'm, I'm the guy running. Was this when you first started, or was this like when you... I mean, middle, but oh, I was, okay, but I was okay. running the department. I'm trying right. to set an example for people. <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck all that. If I had it to do again, I would have gone... Holy shit, it's Viper. Oh. And and if I had to walk what away we... from that job that day, because he would have turned to me and just gone, all right. <laughs> I mean, because that's like one of his best known roles by far, right? right? And like, that's just it, like, it, I had it cocked. I was ready. It right. was there. And I had my finger on the trigger and I was like, ah, I can't do it. I know a lot of stories of you were going to do something and you just didn't do it. But I'm, I'm that, usually gonna... very quick with things. And then, yeah. and then it pops in like, hold on, there might be a consequence to this. Yeah, yeah. But we can we can delve into that uh, maybe another time, yeah. uh, another episode. You're gonna have me back again. Fuck. Hey, if I keep getting the same feedback that we're getting from uh, posting your particular episodes here, then uh, tsh, again, I'll just have you in uh, maybe every every other week. Again, you want to fly me down? I'm happy to come down. I like Arizona. <laughs> it's better than Indiana. You realize I live in fucking Indiana, right? How do you like Indiana? I don't. <laughs> You must be really in love, man. I, well, I am. She's fantastic. And, yeah. and truth be told, you know, I think we talked about this off the air. You can make the best of anything. And and I joke with people that my time in Indiana is, I treat it like prison. You can either join a prison gang and shank a bunch of people and get extra time, <laughs> or you can spend your time in the law library and, and do some push-ups and get in shape. I've spent my time in Indiana doing I, push-ups and trying to get skills. I there. just love your, your analogy of like, it doesn't matter where you live, it's like who you can hang out with or, you know, who you can like be around. It is. Like, it's you know your attitude. I mean, I mean if, yeah. you're, if you're 2000 miles away from people you want to hang out with, you hang out with them some other way. You know, I was never big into Facebook. I was never big into any of that. I joined it so I could hang out with you guys. I mean, look at uh, Tom Hanks on that island. He, he wasn't having a great time. I with just the... watched that movie yesterday. You did? I did. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, he had some okay times with Wilson. Yeah, for but... the record, probably don't watch that before you get on an airplane. <laughs> it's not the best movie for that. We hit, we, hey, everything turned my, out all right. Most of my flight today was full of turbulence when where you, they couldn't serve, and I was thinking, I should not have watched Castaway yesterday. God damn it. When you got in, and you came in, and you uh, you mixed yourself a drink earlier, mm -hmm. did you turn on the faucet and just stare at the faucet, like, turning on and off? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, right. no, but I'm also not that skinny, Okay. okay. Oh, oh, come on, man. You're working. You're, you're getting there. You're going you're gonna to make it, man. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Well, okay. All right. Well, hey, Lee, again, I appreciate you coming in. It's always so fun to have you in here. Like, again, I if I if I could have you in more, we would do it. But uh, you gotta it's make not in our budget. With, with, it's uh, not in our budget, man. Yeah, you got to make room for people with interesting stories. Yeah. No, I, we have to uh, we have to spread the wealth. So anyway, all right. I appreciate you coming in. Until next time, Lee Olson. Thank you again. Hot shit, man. And uh, we'll see you next time. Right on. Later. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends podcast. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. If you enjoyed listening to the podcast, please share away. And make sure you give me a like or a good review. I can always use the help. I'm Josh, and thank you for being a friend.